Good afternoon. Well, aren't you an awesome sight? A sea of possibilities, the faces of a thousand adventures waiting to be launched. Thank you for your kind words, Professor Anastakis, and I'm grateful to the Chancellor and the President, faculty and staff for this honor. I want to thank Christine Walsh for nominating me. I want to place, pay my respects to the founder of this university, whom I have the privilege to call a friend, which is Dr. Tom Simons. And I want to thank you for letting me share the stage with you today. It's appropriate before you embark on your adventure to have a moment of reflection on what brought each one of you to this place on this day. You deserve a deep, deep sense of satisfaction. It wasn't easy. There were many, many difficult days. You've done it. You've achieved one of the greatest landmarks in a human life. You're also in this place at this time because you have been invested with the dreams, the hopes of others who have sacrificed much for the privilege of watching you walk onto this stage today. You represent the hopes of a generation of men and women, your parents and your loved ones, who worked for years to make this day possible for you as well, and for whom this is also a landmark in their lives. You carry their dreams as well as your own. And if I can pause and invite you all to stand I invite you to turn around and applaud them. Now, now take what you can, parents. It's probably all the thanks you're going to get. <laughs> Have a seat. And our graduates waiting up there are hundreds of digital pocket cameras which will, in about 60 minutes, put you through the second biggest challenge of your university career, which is not rolling your eyes uh, through two hours of posing for family photos. Parents, there is a spot just in front of um, Champlain College where it says, Caution, Do Not Swim, Rapids. Greatest spot for a family photo over there, right by the trees river in the background, don't shoot against the sun, leave the flash on to fill in shadows. I've been there. <laughs> this is also a moment of deep satisfaction for those who guided you on this journey. The, a professor, a teaching assistant, a librarian, it can be poignant for them too, a life measured in goodbyes. Because if they've done their job right, you will leave them. You'll find what you think of them. You'll find that you think of them often in your lives, though. Uh, write to them one day. But for now, you can remain seating for this. You might want to give them a moment of gratitude with your applause as well. I like this place. I have a particular affection for Trent. First, my daughter graduated here last year. Madeline uh, is in France today and asked to be remembered to her professors and friends. And if her internet holds up, she's watching this from Montpellier, France online. Uh, but I also like Trent for where it is, what it is, what it represents. This is an institution built on British traditions, colleges, regattas but without pretensions or entitlement. This tranquil setting by the river in what was once a hundred years ago a rough frontier is a place for the sons and daughters of working people who got here by diligence and not by privilege. And while Trent is not weighted by pretension, it is rooted in the daring vision that the great ideas of the arts and the sciences will nourish each other, and that this place will shape critical minds. Now, on to the practical stuff. I have condensed my advice into five small, short pointers 
for what to do with the rest of your lives. Number one, call your parents. <laughs> Number two, remember who you are and where you came from. You're a Canadian. And those of you who've journeyed a long way from abroad to study among us, we consider you Canadians too. You represent today the hope of your society, of your country. You are the nation's strategic investment in the future. Canada, which has nurtured you, is a country built on cooperation, tolerance, and civility. Those qualities are not accidental. They were developed over generations, and they also need to be protected and nourished in a world of global ferocity. You are the heirs of a peaceful tradition of civil values. The preservation of that social responsibility, that national civility, and those values are now in your hands. Number three, resist orthodoxy. Any orthodoxy, ideology, or any certitude, that's hard. You're going to find that really hard. You really have to work on that the rest of your life because this may be the last institution which expects you to be critical and to challenge authority. The next institution in your life will probably exact compliance, require uncritical acceptance of authority and the status quo. You are not just graduating with a diploma. You are graduating from a place that has endowed you with a sharpened mind and, I hope, a social conscience and a spirit of reform. Don't lose that. It's really easy to lose that. Number four, fix it. A good life is achieved in positive increments. In whatever role, large or small, you play in your life, find something that's broken and fix it. If you can't fix the national economy, fix the local school board. If you can't fix the local school board, fix your brother's bike. It adds up and becomes a good, satisfying habit. You may end up as a busybody, but at least you'll be useful. <laughs> Finally, number five, collect stories. It's a little early to think of old age, but it can be helpful to imagine what you want to be remembered for. You want to be able to look back and tell great stories of the places you've been, the adventures and the close calls you've had, the extraordinary people you met, the intimacies and loves, the heartbreaks, the triumphs. Start living and collecting the stories you'll tell and the stories they'll tell about you. A good life isn't measured in money, it's measured in the things you've achieved and the relationships you've made. Don't live a boring life. Dorothy Parker wrote, the cure for boredom is curiosity. She added, there is no cure for curiosity. <laughs> so those are my five modest homilies for living a life. Finally, what can I tell you about the future? Not much, only this. The future is not a place. It is not a fixed destination. There are no pathways to it, no compass settings, no trails in the woods that wait to be uncovered. The future is an ever-changing destination shaped by the traveler and by the journey itself. The pathways to the future are not discovered, they are made. Thank you for letting me be part of your graduating class. <laughs>